We are going to learn how to draw an isocost line. An isocost line tracks different combinations of inputs, if used, that cost the same amount of money. In this case, our inputs are going to be capital and labor. The big K stands for units of capital. The big L stands for units of labor. The little r stands for the cost of a unit of capital. The little w stands for the cost of a unit of labor. C equals the money spent on capital and labor. Total money spent on labor and capital will equal the cost of a unit of labor multiplied by the number of units of labor used plus the cost of a unit of capital multiplied by the number of units of capital used. If we were to hold the total money spent constant that is to say, we only want to know the combinations of labor and capital when the cost equals a particular number, a particular cost. Say, $10. We can find out the different combinations of labor and capital used by rewriting this equation to equal capital. To isolate the units of capital that will be used. We first subtract W times L from both sides of the equation to get C minus W times L equals R times K. And then we divide everything by R. This gives us an equation which only equals the units of capital that will be used in our combination of inputs. Now to draw these isocost lines, we're going to plug in some numbers and we're going to see the outcomes that we get by plugging these numbers into this equation. What are we going to do? We are going to vary the input of labor as we hold constant, the amount of money we are going to spend, the cost of a unit of capital, and the cost of a unit of labor. For our first isocost line, capital will equal 10. See how the 10 goes into the spot we set aside for C? in our equation for total capital used. We insert R in the denominator, and we insert the price for a unit of labor. Now we can vary this variable and then plot the points on the line on this graph. First, let us calculate how much capital will be used for the various inputs of labor. For zero, we would insert zero for L, and we would get five. For two units of labor, again, we'd insert two for L. Two times one half equals one. Five minus one is four. We inserted four for L, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3. If we inserted 6 for L, 6 times 1 half is 3, 5 minus 3 equals 2. If we inserted 8 for L, 8 multiplied by 1 half is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. 
And if we have inserted 10 for L, 10 multiplied by 1 half equals 5. 5 minus 5 equals 0. We can now plot these points onto our graph. When we use 10 units of labor, we will use 0 units of capital. When we use 8 units of labor, we will use 1 unit of capital. When we use 6 units of labor, we will use 2 units of capital. When we use 4 units of labor, we use 3 units of capital. When we use 2 units of labor, we will use 4 units of capital. And when we use 0 units of labor, we will use 5 units of capital. Once we have these points, we connect them to form a line. This line is our isocost line. Any point upon this line is a different combination of labor and capital that we could afford for $10. What if there was a change in the price of labor? Let us look at this situation that would be the green isocost line. Labor has gone from being $1 per unit to being $2 per unit. Let's see how this changes our points. Over here, we have wrote the equation where we have made the change. Notice how we used to have a $1 per unit of labor. We now have $2 per unit of labor. After we've made this change, though, we are still just going to insert different units of labor for L and find the amount of capital used. So, when we use zero units of labor, we have 10 divided by 2 equals 5. When we use one unit of labor, 1 multiplied by 1 equals 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. When we use two units of labor, 2 times 1 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. When we use three units of labor, 1 multiplied by 3 equals 3. 5 minus 3 will equal 2. When we use four units of labor, one multiplied by four is four. Five minus four is one. And when we use five units of labor, five multiplied by one is five. Five minus five will be zero. We will now draw the points from this table onto our graph. So, when we used 5 units of labor, we used 0 units of capital. When we used 4 units of labor, we used 1 unit of capital. When we used 3 units of labor, we used 2 units of capital. When we used two units of labor, we used three units of capital. When we used one unit of labor, we used four units of capital. And when we used zero units of labor, we used five units of capital. We're going to connect the dots. That is our ISO cost line for when we want to spend $10, and the cost for a unit of labor is $2, and the cost for a unit of capital is $2. Notice 
that because our labor costs went up, we cannot afford to use as much labor as we could when the cost of labor in the black diesel cost line was $1 a unit. What if we are willing to spend more money? In the blue ISO cost line, we've increased the amount of money we're willing to spend to $20. Like the black ISO cost line and the green ISO cost line, a unit of capital cost $2. Like the black ISO cost line, a unit of labor cost $1. We're going to plot on this table the amount of capital we will use based on these new assumptions. We're going to take these assumptions first and plug them into our equation. Again, this is the same equation that we've used each time that you can find over in the box that says total capital used. We're still setting capital equal to the total money spent on labor and capital, C, divided by R, the cost of a unit of capital, minus W, the cost of a unit of wages divided by R, a unit of capital, multiplied by the units of labor used. Let us now plug into our equation different units of labor. When we use zero units of labor, we will use 10 capital. When we use six units of labor, six multiplied by one half will give us three, we will use seven units of capital. When we use 10 units of labor, 10 multiplied by a half equals five, 10 minus five will equal five. When we use 14 units of labor, 14 times a half will equal 7. 10 minus 7 will equal 3. When we use 20 units of labor, 20 times 1 half will equal 10. 10 minus 10 will equal 0. We will now graph these points onto our graph. So, when labor equals 20, we use zero capital. When labor equals 14, we use three capital. When labor equals 10, we will use five capital. When labor equals 6, we will use 7 capital. And when labor equals 0, we will use 10 capital. Like before, we will connect our points to get our ISO cost line. observe, because we were willing to spend more money for the blue ISO cost line than we were for either the green or the black ISO cost line, we are able to use even larger combinations of capital and labor. ISO cost lines are just indicators for our convenience to visualize different combinations of capital and labor in which each point on the line is a combination that would cost the same total amount, such that point here at 4 and 1 on the green line would cost $10, and this point over here on the green line, where we use 5 labor and 0 capital, also would cost only $10. These lines hold constant, particular price wages for both a unit of capital 
and a unit of labor. In review, these lines will change for a small set of reasons. Reason one, a change in a price of an input. Reason two, a change in money to use inputs to produce something. Again, our inputs are capital and labor, so when we increased the money we were willing to spend to $20, we increased the amount of capital and labor we could utilize to produce something. 